Hello and welcome friends, welcome to another vintage fountain pen review. This time I have a beautiful, beautiful lever filler from England. I uh, believe it is a piece from the 1930s and it is produced by the famous De La Rue manufacturer. One clue that we have a De La Rue fountain pen, a beautiful fountain pen, stands in this thermically imprinted engraving. We can see the De La Rue pen made in Great Britain. And again, we have another engraving at the end of the barrel. So we have here a 1332. So this is the 1332, and the version is 3.6 point. So 36, I believe. As you can see, guys, this is a lever filler. Probably when you hear the De La Rue name, you associate this name with the Onoto. In fact, the De La Rue pen manufacturer sold lots of different models, but the Onoto was the most famous models of them all. And in time, the company was known as the De La Rue Onoto Fountain Pen Company. This is not an Onoto model, it's a simple De La Rue model. As you can see, made of different, different materials. And I will tell you something about it. So, first of all, we know it's a lever filler because we have this lever over here. So, we know that the lever filling mechanism was introduced by the De La Rue manufacturer in 1924. And also, we know that in 1928, the De La Rue began production on its celluloid models. So it's interesting, guys, that this particular pen is a combination of two materials. And why do I say that? You can see that this material has developed this brown patina over time. And this model, the cap and the barrel, has stood the test of time with this gorgeous, gorgeous, glossy black. What is my assumption, guys? That this material... It is hard rubber and it developed this brown patina in time. And the other material that you see here, it is in fact a celluloid made after 1928. And another interesting thing, guys, when we unscrew the cap, we also can see that the grip section is made out of a different material. Again, we have the same dark brown patina in comparison with the other parts of the fountain pen as we reveal this grip section slightly concave i can uh, show you the beautiful original gold nib we have a warranted 14 carat ldlr and company limited 22 nib you have to know, guys, that this model was available in different colors and patterns starting from uh, 1928. And before 1928, it was all made of hard rubber. So it is possible to find it in the wild, but it will all have this black, uh, uh, sorry, this brown patina that this part has at um it so we know for sure that this model was produced after 1928 because it's made out of a black celluloid but the celluloid is a wonderful wonderful material and uh, of course this particular model was available in different colors and in different patterns you can see the beautiful gold plated trims let me give you a zoom to see them so the lever it is made out of brass and it lost its gold patina in time. But the patina has stood on this, um, these two bars at the end of the cap. Also, the gold patina of this element has faded in time. 
but we can still distinguish the logo of De La Rue back then in the 1930s. It was this sun with the rays around him. A beautiful, beautiful example of a wonderful, wonderful made product in England back in the 1930s. And this guys back then was a quality, um, was a high quality product. In fact, lots of uh, manufacturers from Italy, for example, they had, um, they recognized the quality of English made products. In fact, some of the Italian producers named their fountain pen in English names to fool uh, in a way the market because the English made fountain pens back then were uh, like I told you, high, high quality products and reliable, reliable products. And this fountain pen has stood the test of time and it uh, was, um, it entered in my collection in this wonderful, wonderful shape. So believe it or not, guys, I paid for this around 200 lays and um, what can I say, approximately 40 euros or let's say 45 American dollars. So a wonderful, wonderful price. I bought it as it is. I'm not so sure that I have a functioning sack. Probably it needs to be replaced, but it has the original gold nib and I'm quite, quite pleased with it. Speaking about the original nib, you can see it right here. Some of those models, the 1332 models, have De La Rue gold nibs, but also this is an original nib. It is not a replacement nib. I've seen on the internet sold on eBay similar on auto products, but I also saw some... Um, models of the 1332 fitted with Onoto gold nibs. Interesting, on the back of it we have a simple, simple ebonite feed, which tells me that yes, this is one of the first years of production, so probably from 1928 or 1929, because this model of feed which doesn't have that comb pattern that other feeds have. Well, this was a previous model of the feed, so probably fitted on the pens made in the 1920s. This is what I think, guys, that we have this hard rubber material here and present also here. Maybe they used old parts that were on uh, their stock, before also replacing this part with a celluloid uh, material and also this grip section with a celluloid material. So guys, this is a wonderful, wonderful fountain pen. Before I will leave its dimensions on the screen, I can compare it with the Mont Blanc one Meisterstuck 146 from 1983. Of course, this is a bigger fountain, but it has an inner piston and this has a lever filling mechanism. But you can see its dimensions is slightly smaller than the big, big Mont Blanc 146. Of course, it's like a little toy in comparison with the Mont Blanc 149. But unfortunately, I don't have yet a Mont Blanc 149 in my collection. What a shame. I have over 800 fountain pens and not a single Mont Blanc Meisterstück 149. But I hope I will get it soon. It's on my wish list. So guys, now I will leave its dimensions on the screen. And in the meantime, I will try to change the angle of the camera, guys, for you to see better the writing session. And of course, because I'm not so sure about its inner sack, I think I will use only, I will test it only as a deep pen. So I have here the notebook, the Ina, Inias notebook. Okay, I have here the fountain pen 
and why not guys let me see if i can find a nice nice color of ink to test it and yes i think i have here a red ink from faber castell a quite an affordable ink that i use it on my reviews made in germany 30 millimeters attention it cannot be erased okay i have it right here I will give it a little shake, I will put it here, open it, and now I will dip this pen in ink. Let me slightly, okay, do this. I will dip it in ink like this. I hope the feeder will hold the ink. Now I am removing the excess part of the ink. And now I will clean it. Carefully I will clean just the grip section. So with this I will clean only the grip section. And I will try to leave as many ink as I can on the nib and on the feeder guys. So it looks like this. Okay, now I'm ready to do the writing sample. So what do we have here guys? Here we have one or the de la rue pen, fountain pen. As I told you, made in England or Great Britain. And based on the features that I told you, based on the hard rubber material used in combination with the celluloid, I think this is an early model from 1928 or 1929. Quite a beautiful, beautiful model. Uh, uh, of course, a lever filler, a lever filler, fitted with a beautiful, beautiful T D L. R and Company Limited 14 carat gold nib, the so called number 22 nib. Judging by the way it writes, guys, I think that this is an M, M for a medium nib, medium nib. It is quite a smooth nib. Now I'm trying to see if we have a flexible nib. So, yes, it certainly flexes. Look at it. Let me give you a little zoom. It wasn't made for to flex, but it does flex. And I will try to show you. Look. Yes, certainly a little flex. We have a little flex to it. Let me see how juicy this nib is. You can see quite a juicy nib. And why not let me see now here if we have some line variance. So no pressure here and pressure here. Certainly you can see a little, little line variance. Okay, my friends. Let me see now. So being a juicy nib, I think it is also good for signatures. And yes, it is. And now let me see if we can reverse write with it. So reverse writing. And yes, certainly it could be used in reverse writing. And I will call it in reverse writing an F or an extra fine in comparison with the M that it usually writes. So no loss of uh, flow, no scratching, definitely it can be used as a reverse writer. And now let me tell you about the Fox. So guys, let me tell you about the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy 
dog so this is it guys you can see the beautiful beautiful writing of this fountain pen i like this tdlr and company limited gold nib maybe you can tell me more about this nib why it was fitted on this model i don't know i've seen models uh, like this by the way sorry guys this is a delarue pen number one three three two and 3.6 or 36 i don't know so this is the model guys and uh, some of um, the 1332 were fitted with this tdlr gold nib and the other ones were fitted with delarue gold nibs so again they were all designated as number 22 nibs but it is quite quite interesting if you i can find much more information about the warranted tdlr and company limited because this is sorry guys it is a warranted nib i forgot to mention that so we have here a warranted tdlr gold nib this was my review of a wonderful wonderful piece from uh, the history of fountain pens a high quality product from the 1930s of the great uh, britain industry of uh, fountain pens a nice nice looking example i like it and i bought it at a quite quite decent price so I paid around 40 euros or 45 of American dollars. A great, great price, guys. As always, wherever you are, I want to wish you to have a nice day, guys. If you've enjoyed this unboxing, look, now i am uh, lost the ink. So right at the end of the video, why not? I will dip it again slightly because I want to... Oops. <laughs> yes, this is what happens when uh, you don't uh, take care. Let me give... Let me put this tissue here. Yes, I've ruined the little smiley face. So guys, this was my unboxing of uh, my review of a wonderful, wonderful writing instrument. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've enjoyed this review, please subscribe to my channel to support my activity. In return, I will show you each and every day new and exciting unboxing and reviews, both of new and vintage fountain pen uh, writing instruments. I will see you again at the next review. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye and God bless.